For my text, very familiar for probably Easter Sunday, is called The Empty Tomb, John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark. She saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb, so she ran to Peter and to the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. At that, Peter and the other disciple went out, heading for the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Peter, following him, Simon Peter came also. He entered the tomb and saw the linen clothes lying there. The wrapping that had been on his head was not lying with the linen clothes, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. The other disciple, whom had reached the tomb first, then entered the tomb, saw and believed, for they still did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went home again. But Mary stood outside facing the tomb, crying, and as she was crying, she stooped in to look inside the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where Jesus' body had been lying. They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she told them. I don't know where they have put him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, though she did not know it was Jesus. Woman, Jesus said to her, Why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you've removed him, tell me where you put him, and I will take him away. Jesus said, Mary. Turning around, she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus told her, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. She told them what he had said to her. At the point that this scripture refers to, it was only about three days since Jesus had been crucified. The disciples were huddled, it seems, together in Jerusalem they may have been in the same place that was called the upper room where the Last Supper was held. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, and when she saw, what she saw would change the world forever, completely. Her expectations were low. She was coming, and Luke says they brought spices to anoint the body of the Lord. They were not afraid, but they wished to honor Jesus by anointing his body. This scripture, in this scripture, John says that she saw the stone had been removed, and apparently he says she did not go in at that time, but she turned back around and ran to Peter and John. John usually refers to himself in the Gospel of John as the one that Jesus loved. And so you could say she ran to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved. She said they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. So at that point, she didn't seem to have much of an idea that Christ had really risen from the dead. She saw the stone had been moved. Now, the opening of this stone would have been an enormous task. 
These stones were round, about like a disc, and they were put above the door of the tomb on a bit of an incline track. And so to close the tomb, you would just probably take a wedge or something away from the rolling stone, and it wouldn't take too awful much effort, one or two maybe, to begin the stone to roll down a declining track to the opening of the tomb and close it. This stone could weigh about a ton or maybe more. It rolled downward to close, but it would have had to have been rolled upward to open. So it would take a whole lot more effort to open the, st the tomb rather than to close it. And so what Mary Magdalene thought at first was that someone had stolen the body or taken it or moved it and she didn't know where it was at that point. So she assumed the body had just been moved. If we're not careful, we can always jump ahead of Christ. Christ is in the midst of doing something. Often, I assume the worst before I find out that Christ is in control all the time. And what I thought was the worst was really not the worst was the best. And so it didn't seem like Mary had any inclination that Jesus had risen from the dead at this time. What she didn't know yet was that Jesus is risen. And let me tell you, when you know Jesus is risen, it changes everything. Because without risen Lord, we have no hope at all. For our salvation. If the Lord is not risen, we don't have a church today. We're not saved. We are not forgiven of our sins if the Lord is not risen. And we would have no hope whatsoever of rising ourselves. We would have no hope of eternity if the Lord is not risen. The risen Lord changes everything in a dramatic way. So Peter and John run to the empty tomb and John humorously says that he outran Peter. And so John got to the tomb first and he stooped down and looked in but he didn't go in. Well, Peter, when he gets to the tomb, there's no hesitation. We know Peter in person, don't we? We know Peter's not gonna hold back. He might drill, draw his sword before he went in if he had one. But he just goes right in. He entered the tomb, saw the linen clothes lying there, wrapping been on his head, was not lying with the linen clothes, folded up, put in a separate place by itself. They witnessed the greatest sight that anyone's ever seen. A risen Lord. The world as they knew it forever is changed. Jesus died on the cross, but he rose from the dead. And that, my friends, changes everything from there on out. Now, I want to explain resurrection just a little bit. There have already been people who have been what we call resuscitated. You know, there was Lazarus. Jesus also raised a couple young girls. There were people in the Old Testament that had been raised from the dead. Some think Paul died when they beat him up and laid him out in the street. I, it does not say that he died, but he was like dead. Well, what about the people then who have been resurrected from, or what I would call resuscitated in their death? They became alive again, but they had fleshly bodies and they would later somewhere die again. So Lazarus was raised from the dead, but he died again at some point. Jesus, though, we would use the term solely, was resurrected from the grave. 
He was resurrected in a glorified body in which he is the only one in the glorified body today in heaven. And when we are resurrected from the grave, we will have a glorified body also. Now, it's interesting that Jesus, when he was resurrected from the grave, seemed to have be similar in his appearance as he was when he was alive in the flesh and body. And so I'm not sure we can say that in, when we are resurrected in our glorified body, we may have some resemblance to how we are right now. Now this has caused me some concern. Because <clears throat> I wouldn't mind if my resurrected body looked a little better than my body now. When I had my, my skull pieces put back in place that they had removed after my accident, I had two pieces that were taken out. And so a couple months later, the doctor said, well, it's time we'll put these pieces back. And so I told him before the surgery, I said, doctor, take your time putting the pieces back. Try to make me look as good as you can. Don't get in a hurry. So I thought if he can improve anything, well, that'd be a good time to do it. Right there. So after the surgery, I looked in the mirror and, and I, I didn't think I looked so much better, but I was glad I looked as good as I did. So I don't know. That's just food for thought. Jesus died and this changes everything. I'm so glad I was born in a Christian, to a Christian home. And I was raised by grandparents. And my grandmother loved the Lord. She prayed with me a lot at home. Her bedroom was downstairs the house. My bedroom was upstairs. And before I would go upstairs to bed, I would stand at the bottom of the steps and her door was open to her bedroom and we would stand there and talk a good bit. And we would have prayer there about various things. Sometimes about something I was facing, sometimes about my family or other types of things. I have a vivid memory of her praying there. In, she was in bed. But I was standing at the bottom of the steps. I accepted Christ at about 11 years old. I remember believing that I was saved forever at that time. My friends, accepting Jesus Christ changes everything in your life. And as a young boy, <clears throat> having the idea in which I thought was the assurance that I was saved and would go to heaven when I died. And 11 years old, maybe you don't think about death all that much, but to me it was important to think that I was one with Christ Jesus the Lord at that time. You see, accepting Jesus changes everything. It makes our lives look a lot different than it would if we didn't know Christ as Lord. I have to tell you at times I come in contact with, with people that... I doubt seriously if they know Christ as Savior. And I just strive to wonder what their mindset is. What is the compelling factor in their minds as to what they do and what is important in life and what the end of life is going to bring about? I fail to understand what a man or woman can be thinking about that don't know the Lord as Savior. So we see the disciples went back after they saw the empty tomb. The Bible says here that they saw and believed. But then verse 11, whether it's a short time later, I'm not sure. The Bible says that Mary was standing outside facing the tomb and crying. And as she was crying, she stooped in to look at the tomb, and two angels were inside. Again, she doesn't seem to have the idea that Christ has really risen from the grave yet at this time. 
she told them why she was crying. In verse 13, because they've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put them, put him. So there again, she's still under the idea that Jesus is still dead and the body is missing. So when Mary saw Jesus without recognizing him, the Bible says she thought he was the gardener. And she even asked him, if you've removed him, tell me where you put him, I will take him away. So Jesus then seemed to only speak her name, Mary. And with only the sound of her name coming from Christ Jesus the Lord, she knew exactly who he is. Can we imagine at that moment? She's a very privileged person to have this experience here with Christ Jesus the Lord. No matter what she thought before, when she saw Jesus and knew that he had raised from the dead, it changed everything. Nothing is the same as it was before. Mary then went to the disciples and she told them, I have seen the Lord. In verse 18, she told them what he had said to her. It changed everything. The disciples were then cast out on the greatest missionary mission that had ever been set out upon to tell the whole world that Jesus is risen from the grave. And Paul would later see Jesus on the road to Damascus. And from then on, throughout his letters and his ministry, no matter what else he taught them, the emphasis that he always repeated over and over, and you can read it in the epistles. Just read the epistles, and sometimes the things that Paul says is written there. And he will almost always include that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he is alive. And that is the one point of contention that he ran into was people who did not believe that, yet he was always proclaiming that. That was his mission. To say that we're serving a living Jesus, a living Christ, and he is the Messiah. And he does forgive us of our sins. In my life... I've been a little hard-headed, a little bit like Thomas. There have been times when I've thought, yeah, but until I see this and this and this, I'm not going to be too sure. And I might ask for any things you can imagine. Well, until I see Jesus perform this particular work here, uh, I'm not going to be too sure. And so I go through that for a little bit, but I have to tell you that since my early life, Jesus has shown me time and time again his hand in my life. Now, I haven't seen him write something on the wall. I've not heard an audible voice. I don't have to hear or see those things. There's nothing more miraculous than, that I need to see than I have already seen. The Lord Jesus rescued me from near death. And as I look at it, I can't help but see anything else than it was God's hand completely. And he has healed me numerous times that I could have died. I was near an explosion in Burlington. I don't know if you ever heard, but when I worked there, one time... <laughs> I blew up an oxycetylene tank on a truck that I was standing within three foot of. This explosion was heard a mile and a half away. It shook both buildings at Burlington. Everyone there around knew something had happened. And I walked away from it. 
And when I came back to where the truck was, they were in there hunting for me. They thought I'd been blown to smithereens, I guess. But I was alive and well. What is that except the Lord puts a shield around you and protects you? The Lord has given me a wonderful family. The Lord has called me now for 36 years to be a minister and a pastor. What can that be? Except the hand of God. It certainly wasn't me. I would not have thought I could have ever did it. And I know there's things in your life too you could look back upon right now. And you would readily say. If it wasn't for the Lord. I don't know how I could have did these things. I bet there's numerous things. Perhaps more dramatic than anything I've experienced. When we come to believe that Jesus Christ is risen and we accept that in our lives and live every day having a relationship with him, my friends, brothers and sisters, it changes everything. And if you're here and saved today, you already know that. You know that Christ has changed your life. And I know that he has changed my life. I cannot even imagine where I would be right now if I hadn't found the Lord at an early age. And you know, back when I was growing up, it didn't seem like things were quite as bad as, as they are now. I grieve at a young person today growing up without the Lord because there are so many things out there that are pulling pulling so a, a, you know, an attentive and sometimes deceivingly attractive way. And young people are very prone to follow after these things. I pray that we all find the Lord as Savior. And I know when that happens, it changes everything completely. Let's pray. Lord, we celebrate today the most momentous occasion. The greatest event that has ever taken place in the history of the whole universe. Jesus Christ arose from the grave. He is living today. Lord, we can have a relationship with you. Through the Holy Spirit, you walk with us and talk with us. You change everything in our lives. So I pray, Lord, that as we live, we'll grow and be guided by you every, in everything that we do. Let not anything from evil or Satan overcome us. We are more than conquerors through Jesus who loved us. So thank you, Lord. May the resurrection be as real to us as if we could open our eyes and see you standing right before us. And in so many ways, that is truly what happens. You are really right before us at all times. How can we praise you enough for the Savior that you are to us? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.